somebody is hurt in a situation in a relationship and then there is a statement like your partner isn't hurting you it's you how this is a concept that people find contradictory okay i have two people in the studio with me here Topper robots dr Topper robots and Ajiri. and in the past when Ajiri and i have talked about topics like this and anything close to this has been said she's been startled by what do you how how are you how can you possibly be blaming the person who is who is the victim here and so let's just get into it and see how this works what we mean when we say this no. how does that statement come across uh, maybe we shouldn't start with me because I'm very. I uh, let let me hear. Let's hear from Tofe first. Or from because you. you're what? Uh, I'm on the fence. You're on the fence. No, that's why we want to start with you because <laughs> that's actually why I want to start with you. It takes two to make a relationship work. Yes, but I've come to see over time, over the years, that more other than not is the party who is the victim or who is the hot party who seems to want it to work more the other party always seems either male or female always seems to have in quotes emotionally checked out of the relationship and they're just um going through the motions marking time so you find the victim the person getting the backlash the person that is hurt over trying trying to overcompensate in the relationship trying to so hard to make it work yes i can see the point of view that probably he or she um, you know how you say you're pointing three fingers and two others are pointing at you i can see how he or she may not see in their perception of the issues their side of things but other than not, most times it's the other party who causes offense and continues to cause offense in spite of how the party that is hurt hammers and goes on and on about, I don't like this thing you're doing, I don't like what you have done. But because the other party has mentally, emotionally checked out of the relationship, there's just no empathy. There's just no feelings. There's just no consideration. Yeah, so, yeah, that's that's where I come from. So you're saying that, in essence... I'm saying, in as much as it takes two to tango, more often than not, the party who is causing the offence is to blame. It's to blame maybe... Okay. 99.1%. Okay, because the other party is 0.09. Okay, so the person who is causing pain is to blame. Okay. Because, because they're the one creating... Because he or she created the situation they're in. Okay, that makes a lot of sense too. Yeah. Yeah. So, what would and you he say? Or she, he or she most times because of how far gone they are in whatever rubbish they're doing, they're not willing to put in the effort and the time to get back to what they were with, once were with their spouses. Okay, so when you hear a statement like, your partner is not hurting you, it's you, you will not agree with that. You will say that it's the person um, who is... Uh, you, 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 most times the party that is hurt in retrospect, in retrospect, may look back and feel, I did this, 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 and led to the other party doing this, this, this. Maybe, just maybe. Right, so, thanks to see, it, it's nice to see your perspective, but I just kind of want us to, to go back a little bit. We're talking about relationships between adults, and we want to believe that these are mature people over the age of 18. They have decided that they want to get into a romantic relationship. They might be partners, they might be married. Let me tell you where I think some of the faults come from. And it starts right from the time you're dating this person. I think one of the faults that 
the the victim quote unquote makes and they blame the oppressor for is actually their failure to reach some signs when you find i i had an experience when i was dating someone and i remember the very first time i i was opportune to see that person physically he picked a fight with me and th th there's nothing normal about that i mean this someone you've been talking to you know video calling talking over the phone everything and the first time you, you see the person face, face to face, they pick a fight. That for sure was a red flag. Even if the person, it was obvious that this person probably has an anger problem or a temper tantrum or was immature. But guess what we do when we now come down the line and we start playing the victim card, we fail to read the signs or we fail to acknowledge the signs or we make excuses when we see this sort of behaviors thing okay are we back on okay so yeah, maybe yeah. maybe maybe things are just not going good well you know this is somebody that's saying i'm interested in you and the first time he's seeing you he's picking a fight that should tell any woman that this thing is is up to is we call it in medicine dead on arrival it is and of mm -hmm. course after that it was just a cascade and a cascade of more and more and more and in fact there was a time i was accused of saying stuff in my sleep mm -hmm. and the person picked up a fight because of what i said in my sleep when i was dreaming or you can imagine how terrible that is but guess what the so-called victims fail to read those signs we fail to see that there is a problem here you are dating someone that is already pulling you down even before you get into his house that will not respect you and you keep accepting it that is where you're wrong where you fail to read those signs and then when you start to interpret the signs or misinterpret the signs for example someone picks up a fight with you and you're like you know he really didn't mean to hurt me that's his way of showing love that's just crazy you can't see something that is red i have red nail polish and say you know it's blue <laughs> or it's gray because it matches the top it's not so the and, and it tends to happen to women when we feel that time is not on our side when we feel that you know we, this is for one somebody is actually interested in me i have to grab everything at least at least he at least he came to see me even if he treats me badly when he arrives the fact that we fail to interpret those signs is our fault the fact that we misread those signs is our fault let me tell you the third the third problem we have we fail to respond appropriately to those things when they when we're faced with them okay. if for example in my own in my own experience the first time this guy met me i had said look here i'm missing you for the first time and you're picking up a flight fight i hope this will be the last time you'd ever try that with me because next time in fact there'll be no next time i'm not going to put up with it so what you're doing is setting your boundaries clear from the beginning and guess what that guy has a check so next time he's going to get mad, he's going to say, you know what? I stand a chance of losing this woman. Therefore, I'm going to try and work on myself and improve myself and try and make things work if you are really interested in that person. Because what you find then is that these are people that are just trying out different things and mm. finding out which one would work for them or which one would Well, that not. makes sense. Okay. It does. Because at the end of the day, you now become his victim. So you, you don't respond appropriately the first time. That's your fault. And then some of us women stupidly, sorry to use that word, carry on and carry on. And one day we say, okay, they love us. They can. There were women. I had a friend. She was was engaged she was to be engaged to this guy. He came from okay, abroad. I'm not sure where that sound is coming from. They are taking a shwebi, everything was all set. And I think two days to the engagement, they got into an argument. The guy beat her up. Guess hmm. what she did? She canceled the wedding. 
The mother was mm -hmm. like, oh my God, all the family, we've taken a shabby, we bought cow, the canopies are up, the alasses are here. The woman said, no, I'm not going to marry this person. And they called it off. So that was a that was a woman. If she had gone into that relationship, and the guy said, "I'm ah, sorry, now you know, I was just having a bad day. I really didn't mean to hit you," but she was like, "No." But you know, some women will still go ahead and say, yeah. "At least I said sorry now." She is only beating he beat you now, and yeah. of course, we know what happens after that. I'll stop here. So I will summarize. We fail to read the signs. We fail to interpret the signs we're reading and we fail to respond appropriately. Those are some of the things that we get wrong okay. as well. I like what you said that, look here, I don't like this and I hope this is the last time. Amen. I'll take it a step further. I'll do one better. Say to him, I, okay, I met you at the airport or wherever it is. And this is, you know, so I'll say, I don't like this attitude. And you can go back and then we can see some other time. And I will turn around and leave. Because we've been talking before and I have been seeing you on video and, you know, we've developed this rapport. I already am interested in you. I will tell you, I, I like you, but this that you've just done doesn't work. And I will turn around and leave. And you know why? I have to take the chance of losing him completely because if I don't, here is where, where we, another step where we get it wrong. Because we are all different and we come from different households and different experiences in life, sometimes this person feels that what they're doing is normal. They don't even realize. Honestly, because you are a decent person, because we are decent, we understand civilized and decent behavior. And, but we assume and we project onto the next person that common sense. And I, I see now that so many people do not even have what you think is common sense. And this is a fact. You know, I hate to sound like that. For many years, I will talk to people about relationships. But what I would not do is discuss relationship problems, which I'm doing now. And the reason I wouldn't is because I always felt, you know this thing, you know what it is, you know what it means. And the most I will do is no, do this, no, don't do that. But to think about discussing it, 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 it seems almost so, so ordinary to me that I expect that everybody should know this. So you see, some of these people are coming from places where they've been doing this, and to them, this is a normal way of life. So that when they come to me and they do it, and I, and I ignore it because I feel like maybe he's having a bad, so I don't say anything because maybe he had a bad day, he had a bad experience, I ignore it. He doesn't sometimes recognize that this is nonsense that he's doing. So he just feels that it is normal. So he's going to do it again next time. And then people will say to me, oh, you are just saying that because maybe you don't have the need for a man, or maybe you feel like you can have your pick of, of men. But the bottom line is if I take this one because I feel that I'm not going to have another, I am still going to in another two months, six months, two years, six years, I am still going to go through pain and I am still going to walk away from this pain. So why don't I establish from the beginning that this is not okay? And I go away and he can see that he's either going to shape up and, sh you know, or it's done. I don't want to give him any chance. And this is what I wish that we would learn when we were younger. And another thing that's okay, so recognize that they don't always know. We think, we think that maybe he's testing us. We think that maybe he's angry at that moment. <laughs> but all we don't know is that maybe this is his normal, this is his default way of being. So let him understand that, uh-oh, what's wrong with her? Or what is wrong with his behavior? So what I expect him to do now is to get back in touch with me to find out, why did you, why, why did you take that so seriously? So that we can now understand, you know, and that's why I say that we need to fight. We need to fight for what we want. When I say that we should fight, some people feel fighting is wrong because it's going to destroy the relationship. But you see, that fight is an opportunity for us to understand each other so that when he tells me this thing is normal, this is what, what we do all the time, I can let him know that this is not going to be normal with me so that we're setting out on the right footing.
we shouldn't be no. giving that extra benefit of the doubt. No, and again, you know, one of the reasons, sorry, I'm just going to quickly respond to that, if that's okay. One of the reasons why Uzo called me on this talk was because I had posted a video and the video was about values. And here I'm talking about mature single women. So I'm not talking about people that are just starting out. And one of the things I talked about was understanding the values that this person has compared to yours. Seriously, you're not going to re-educate him. You're not his mother for crying out loud. So if you find that you are, you are having to continuously contend with things as simple as good behavior and manners, then maybe you guys are really not suitable for each other. It's going to need a blood transfusion. Exactly. We need to match. We need to match. We need to cross match. And we need to be sure. And you'll be surprised. Some people can still get some reactions even after we've done this. So it's really important. That person, that doesn't make that person a bad person. No. It just doesn't make him the right person for you. And women need to get to that point where you know that, look, he's good, but he's just not good for me. There's probably mm. another woman that finds it okay to wake up and just have fights. And the more fights you have, the, the more you love each other. That's their cup of tea. It's just that it's not yours. So you as a woman, you need to define who you are, what you want, what you would accept, and be unapologetic about it. And you don't have to now come down to settle for what's going to make you a so-called victim because you allowed those things to happen. Thank you. Adi, did you want to say something? Yeah, um, because we're talking um, across demographies and across age groups, I really wonder how many impressionable 19, 20, 21, 22 year old young girls who are starting the starting to navigate relationships. How many of them are mature enough to know that they should set boundaries, to know that what they tolerate will continue, to know that what they allow will persist? They've built castles in the air of how they want their future to be. So he comes along, she notices these red flags, but she's like, he'll change, he'll change for me. She doesn't get the memo. So she enters knowing fully aware, fully aware that these, these, and these are his shortcomings or believing in some grandiose mind of hers that things will change and she gets in two three four years down the line she becomes the victim because of what she tolerated when they were dating right you're right i'll go back to what you said Ajiri. you said something that was really um it, it's really true that the person who is doing this is the one who is creating it you see, what, I, what we do is, what we should pay attention to is the way that we bring up the girls and the boys. This is where it starts. Because, yes, there are also a lot of men who have problematic women who are just difficult in their relationship. And so men are also going through this. But in majority of the cases, women understand how to be in a relationship because we are, we are taught emotional relationship um behavior right from the time that we're young we are taught to care for the next person and to be considerate of the next person and to do things to make the next person happy but boys are allowed to play and they are not taught in that way instead what we'll see is when he's not doing something right they will say, ah, hurry up and marry so that you can have a wife who will take care of you, who will do this and do that. So we're already in the position of the caretakers. We are the ones who take care. And that's why we are usually more, more many times, the victims, where somebody is doing something wrong. And all we want to do is we're going to show how much more we care by doing more. It just doesn't work that way. And that's what we need to begin to understand. And while we're at it, I must point out, I must stress always that I am not an advocate for women. I'm not a women's advocate. Because I also recognize that there are lots of men who are getting the wrong end of the stick from very wicked women. And for them, it might even be worse because who are they going to speak to without the feeling of being emasculated? Because men are held to standards that enslave them to being strong, even in the face of pain. 
And so the whole idea is more often than not. I'm just pointing out the reasons why women adopt an attitude of accepting poetry. I'm never a woman's advocate because everybody's equal in the eyes of God and in my eyes. And so uh, when you say that the person who is doing wrong is the okay, so. perpetrator and he's the he's the criminal, he's the offender in this situation. Hmm. Yes, he's the one who starts it. But we that have been taught what is proper, what we're supposed to know is right or wrong, then we suddenly take the baton from him. He gives, he hands over the baton and you begin to be the one who allows toxicity to be the no. owner of this relationship. Hmm. And this is why I want to say that when it's happening in your relationship, you are the one because you see what the person is doing. They may not know, again, remember, they may not know that what they're doing is wrong. Actually, they really may not know. Not everybody has been brought up the way you've been brought up, you know? And so when you feel that somebody is doing something to you that you don't like, it is not now for us to be patient because we are brought up to be patient, a society especially, not to speak of for ourselves. And so you will see the other day, somebody was talking about a mother-in-law who every time the kids, the grandchildren are leaving her, she wants to kiss them on the lips. And the, the daughter said, and, and these are white people. And th this day, as they were leaving, the kids, one of the kids didn't want grandma to kiss him on the lips or her on the lips, whoever. And the mom said, well, he, she doesn't want it. And the grandma got upset and even after they went home, was calling and was complaining. But you see, in our society, what we will do is, we'll say, ah, just come on, you know, we'll, we'll make that child give up what they want want them to be considerate and want them to be patient and accept what they don't want from somebody else. So we don't really establish um, the teaching of boundaries. In our schools, we learn how many legs the grasshopper has. But all the things that we need for life, for a proper survival, we don't, those things, nobody's teaching those things. Nobody talks about finances, nobody talks about relationships, but these are things that are important. And so if we learn from the beginning that I actually need to speak up for myself, you know, instead of being patient with a person, he may not know, or he may be, he may be a bully. He may have he may have very poor um, very poor discipline, self discipline. So he just wants to just do whatever he wants to do, and then you allow it. So then at the end of the day, we're the ones allowing it because he doesn't even know how painful it is to you. So we have yeah, to just learn. yeah, good yes. I just wanted to talk again because things are changing. I love the fact that you said, you know, um, when boys were allowed to play. And then their moms and, and dads will say, just go and get married. Your wife will take care of you. But we do know in the last 10, 20, 30 years, there has been a big paradigm shift. And what is happening now is that those days when women took care of their husbands, they probably didn't go, the women didn't go to school. They were full-time housewives. They just bought kids, looked after them and served their husbands. Now there has been a big shift there. We're not having women going to school. We're having women that are professionals. We're having women that are earning. We're having women that are not just baby machines, but they have so many other facets into their life. And then to top it all, we're having women and men and married couples leaving that social and cultural environment back home in Nigeria, in our case, and moving to the diaspora where things work absolutely differently and i've come in my own i'm um, to learn in my own little professional group that a lot of victims or problems to do with domestic abuse has to deal with people that cannot just settle and get that shift around their heads talking about the men here they just cannot imagine that their wife or their spouse is now the breadwinner. She's now the one that has all the qualifications. Then I have to sit at home and wash the dishes and do school runs and everything. And it, it makes them feel very powerless. So what do they do? They have to attack the only person that is there for them, which unfortunately is their wife. She has to take on all that rubbish because his expectations can't be met because of things that have changed and things that are changing and that will continue to change. And now to the solution is the fact that we need to train our sons, our children to know the right thing to do, to be part of the home, to learn to be respectful to their sisters and to their friends. We need to train them because you can't, 
you can't if there are no rules if there are no speed limits on our highways we can go up to 200 do you understand because there's no limit so even for our kids we need to put limits we need to let them know this is how to behave this is how to do things and then we can hold them accountable when they don't meet those targets or we don't they don't meet those important. we can't just leave them and then come back and have big expectations from them and on another note to be quite honest i don't feel angry with the person who is doing these things because Adria, as you know what i say is we are nobody is infallible we are all imperfect in one way or the other right and so even when i say to this person you have to turn around and go back to where you're coming from i'm not doing this in anger really i'm doing it because it's what has to be done because if i don't do it and the next person doesn't do it she's going to come into this relationship with me it's not going to work and if eventually somebody grows the balls and decides to walk out of the relationship he's going to go to the next one and it's going to be the same thing again so where it is is we have to first be ready for relationships a lot of us aren't ready for relationships but we get into relationships and so now people are talking about marriage being under attack i wouldn't say that marriage or, or that marriages are under attack i wouldn't say marriages are under attack i would say that the institution of marriage is under attack but we're not facing the right thing and what it is is in the foundations who are the people who are even creating the marriage what do they know about creating a relationship so if you're going in there and you don't even know how to be in a relationship for sure that relationship is going to be troublesome and at the end of the day it's going to be wrecked and if it's not wrecked while it lasts even if it lasts 40 or 50 years it's a whole 40 or 50 years of nonsense and a waste of somebody's life really because you've lost all those years where you could have been having a peaceful existence with another human being and good compa good company and then at the at is it at 70 or 80 what is the whole point what's actually the whole point of that whole marriage at the end of the day and so that's why we have to go back to the foundations and people are also saying because of the frustrations they're saying oh um monogamy is the problem uh in our culture we are actually polygamous and so if we weren't having monogamy then we wouldn't be having all these problems but that's not the problem the problem is that you don't know how to be a, pro a, 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 a proper human being and you need to go back and polish yourself and all of us need to do that and then they say oh maybe because we're having love marriages you see the arranged marriages were lasting 60 70 years <laughs> i mean all these things just don't make sense because we're in 2024 and if you're talking about arranged marriages yes they may be lasting they may be lasting but what is the policy of that marriage how many of those kids have the father's dna because the people are just there suffering through it and somebody is not happy and they are finding their sucker somewhere else so the marriage has lasted 50 years but it's it's it, it means nothing you know and if you go and check who those children belong to you might find out that they're not even the the, the children of the, the man so ah, it's let's not about go there let's not go there, let's not go there. Why not? It's no, it's not about yeah. So it's not about We're escaping and saying that these days. You know that with DNA. Yeah. So you and you've been told DNA. you've been told that your country is one of yeah. the highest with the uh, uh, paternity fraud. Paternity fraud. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so it's just about us not being authentic, right? And not being ready to work on ourselves. And I say that there is nothing that you do in this world that you get without working. And if you don't work for it. Then you're going to just settle for what you have. If you if you want to live a life of a life of being just settling for what what is available, that's fine. But I'm very sure that some people who actually want a quality life where they're living a life that they're enjoying, and so these are people who are going to seek the knowledge that they need to be able to really have what they want to enjoy. Otherwise, they're going to be living a life that you know you're not happy with, but you have to just make do with it, and make pretend polish it when you, for the outside world but you know that you're dying inside i don't know who wants that but i know that i don't want that and that's it so at the end of the day so we attract what we are so if i don't if i'm not a, a high quality or high standard person i am going to settle for that low quality and low standard thing but if i so when i say ask for respect i'm not i'm not even talking about fighting so that's another thing we we'll have to talk about how do you go about this not by fighting and not by being angry. 
and i'm here i'm hoping the younger generation before they get into marriage will stumble into this define who you are and what you want from inception please it will be lovely it will be wonderful if as early when especially you know how the you know our parents say that a lady there's a there's a period when a lady is in her she's like a flower she's in her no, bloom. you know when everybody is she's in her bloom it would be lovely wonderful if before you get to that period of being in your bloom when guys you know you're like a petal you know like the petal and you know they're all you know sh -sh -sh around you it would be lovely if you have defined before you got to that point in your life what you want from life it would be lovely if you have defined your values it would be lovely if you know who you are because the problem starts from knowing who you are what you stand for and what you don't stand for most times unfortunately because of lack of awareness on these younger ladies or may i say naivety they really cannot define what they want so they accept what they get i don't know if i'm making sense that's that's a little bit of it that's that's partially yeah partially the problem so because they've not defined what they want anybody will work up as he proposed to me now ah you get money I think time. that many times people even also know what they want, but they, there's a lot that they don't know. So it's like it's something, it's like a hand with five fingers. So knowing what you want is just one part of it, you know, because sometimes you see someone who knows what they want. I meet the guy at the airport. I know that I don't want someone just getting angry with me out of the blue. I already know that. But how to now deal with it is a different thing. How yeah, do you get it when you know also forget? that subconsciously our girls have been trained to be submissive and to show respect so oh. she might meet the guy at the airport and he blows off her and the first memo in her mind is ah, i meant to be respectful let me not say anything let me keep quiet mm. Mm -hmm. so mm. that's another angle mm. so, that is her, another so that is her default training that but we cannot like, yeah but we should never ever normalize that my sister we should, we should never ever tell her what, children what, we shouldn't normalize we that should but never what, normalize what you respect the god's respect our daughters respect the god's respect so if a man blows up and gets mad at you in a public space he's disrespecting you by that action and again you can give him a warning you can say don't let's do this again or maybe find a girl up your street which is not me unfortunately you have to make that decision and yes i was i am for respect i train my children to be respectful i try my best to be respectful to people but if people keep disrespecting you I don't think it's cool to respect them first thing and then actually one other thing i wanted to say that list where you were saying that every young woman should know what they want can we just put three things down that list and i call it the three sixes the six pack the six foot our six feet and the six inch long third leg put that down 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 your list because those are things that would wear and go away and stop working at some stage and we should start telling them to look for more concrete things and to put those concrete things up their list because you meet this three six perfect guy but he might be trouble behind the six pack the six feet tall, um height and the six inch long but, but those three are very essential though they are but they should not be what they should not be the main driver that's what i'm saying put them on your list but that should do you know when, when you look at whether somebody has passed or failed there's some things they call jara i feel that those things should be jara not the driver jara okay okay i was having this just brings me to i go i got into a conversation with some young up and coming young men yesterday after service you know and of course, these are young guys, they, they're looking to settle down, they're looking around, they're scoping the sisters and, you know, are more in their midst, you know. And they were like, it's not the way it is back home. Back home, you can approach, you can chase, you can show interest. 
but they're like the culture here you don't dare show interest or try mm -hmm. to chase mm -hmm. if not you'll be tagged you know you can be you can get into trouble you know so i'm like so how is the other the lady supposed to know you like her or you have interest and they're like okay you start, start a conversation you just start a random conversation you know and you know the vibes you get in return sends a message to you if you should go further or not apparently the memo most of these young men have gotten is that these girls don't want to be chased they don't want to be pursued and i'm like his son has already turned, turned me down again <laughs> they don't want to be chased they don't want to be pursued and yeah. i'm like so how do you i mean how do you find this your brides that you're looking for and one of them goes well i'm a fine boy fine boy no people there are lots of people on the on the you know on the there are lots to choose from you know, if I, and I'm like, but well, you're just looking at the peripheral, you're just you're just looking at the physical. And he's like, if I'm not attracted in the first place, I will not even go close to find out what's inside the package. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I will not take any from the back. Shouldn't you get to know the person, the person's wit, the person's mind, the person's personality? And he goes, no, the package is, I see, you know, what I like, and then I go and show interest. You know, so, I mean, what's your... I don't have, I don't I think that it's perfectly right because how am I supposed to come and start talking with you if I'm not even interested in the first place okay but the thing is you might be missing me because on the outside you don't realize that I am actually what you want if I were a guy and I, I didn't find the girl interesting just looking at her there is no reason there's not there's no motivation for me to find out who she is right so i can't blame him and the same thing with the girl who the guy that's why when when Sokali said those things my interpretation of those things is that yes those things should not be the only without which or let me say if i have those things and i don't have the other things then i am i shouldn't be going further but those things are very important because if i don't have the attraction i mean i just feel like i need i'm explaining it because some people have heard that that attraction and the way a person looks isn't what you're supposed to be considering and they might hear this and misunderstand it because we are mature and we understand i i believe i understand what i is saying but somebody who is young because i've seen them saying i don't like the way he looks i don't like this that, 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 that. and then i hear people say oh just go ahead that doesn't matter and that's really not true it does matter, except that it's not going to stand alone by itself. The character, personality, those things have to also be there in addition to that, because if the attraction isn't there, he can have all those beautiful attributes. And when we get there, nothing is going to be happening because just the sight of him is going to be irritating to me. Now we're living together. I cannot stand to even have a conversation with him. And so it's really important that those three things are there in addition to those other ones. So that young man who is saying that he wants, he's, he's totally right, you know, but we, we just remind them that, okay, if you look at just the outside appearance, you might miss what is on the inside. So take a step, take a step further. So just have a conversation, just have a conversation. That conversation might lead to another conversation. And what we find is that outward beauty and appearance, I think we all know that after a while, no matter how beautiful a person is, when you find out their character and you find out their personality, you might even actually hate them, despite all their good looks. So the, the, the outward appearance is important, but even if, if you're really interested in finding someone, have a conversation here and there, have a conversation here and there, you might discover that after a while, that appearance that you thought wasn't good looking for you will start to look attractive. And the one that was looking attractive will start to annoy you. <laughs> That's the truth about that's what appearance. Yeah. I mean, for me, it's, it's all about, I know we use this term a lot, packaging. Anybody can package anything for anybody. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Girls can package their butt and bum and everything for any man. So we need to go beyond just looking at the packaging on, of the gift. We need to be able to open up the gifts, like you said, and get to know the person 
who is behind this packaging. I find the beauty that really, really lasts is that inner beauty. Your six pack guy will probably spend more time in the gym than at home with you because it needs to maintain a six pack. Don't forget. So young ladies, <laughs> please, please, please give people a chance. Talk to them, get to know Thank them you, and girl. don't, don't, don't just prioritize the times, the six times three. Well, on that, okay. at some time, some time okay. the person who has become used to getting things or getting people interested in them because of their looks mm -hmm. will actually not be up to standard in other areas. Usually right? they're not. So, sorry? Usually, is, usually well, they're Well, not. I wouldn't want to say that because I think that would be unfair. But let's just say usually, that sometimes. Not in all cases, <laughs> but usually. You have to pick one. You can't be everything. No, seriously. Yesterday I had some guests over. Everything, no. No, we were listening to reggae music, and they were say, talking about all the different artists. And I said, I'm sorry, I don't know any of these people. And they're like, How come? I said, Because I spent all my time reading and studying. I wanted to become a doctor. I didn't want to fail my exam. I didn't have time to party. I didn't have time to hang out. You have to choose one. That was what I chose. A so-called boring. Okay, no, life. no. I think you don't have to choose one, but we 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 think that we have to or choose prioritize one. Prioritize one. You have to prioritize one. Yeah, you have to prioritize one exactly. So so now, what I like to say to people who are attractive, young people who are attractive, you have to be careful. No, actually, you have to be careful because it makes you feel like this is your this is what you have to give to the world, and while you are busy thinking about that you don't think about other things that are necessary that you require to be able to get ahead in life and and it's not everything that looks will get for you and so all of a sudden when those things when it's time when the when the when the when push comes to show when it's time you are not able to meet up with all, any other thing because all you have is this and if it's something where your looks are not what is required what happens so we need to brush up on other areas of work. And that's why sometimes you get to meet that person who is so attractive and you find out that, oh my gosh, no, I can't deal with this because what is inside is not, is not palatable. So at the end of the day, when someone is, when instead of saying this person is doing this to me, let's take the bull by the horns by ourselves. And, and most of the time, again, it's maybe there is something about us that is not up to standard you know and so because of that we just don't feel that we can do better so instead of relaxing into i have to take this i improve myself so that i have more options because that's something that stops people maybe it's because i can't leave because i don't have this i don't have that now this should be a, a pointer to me that this thing that i don't have that's forcing me to be in this place i need to conquer it so i need to start working if it's education if it's money, if it's whatever, it's, if it's even my looks, whatever it is, then I need, to, I need to conquer that thing. I need to start working. So these things should just help us to do better and to improve ourselves, right? And not to be forced to sit there and then be pointing fingers at the person forever and report, reporting them and remaining in the victim, victim mode, which doesn't get me anywhere. So we need to throw it out the window that this person is doing this thing to me instead. Those other fingers that are pointing to me, I should use them to look inwards to myself. What is it that I need to improve about myself? That's how it should be. I think Thank it's you. been covered. And uh, uh, yeah, no, everything, um, uh, there's nothing that cannot be worked out. Um, how do you even, mean, please? <laughs> you mean, uh, what I'm trying to say is, you may be the victim, he may be the perpetrator or she may be the victim the perpetrator he may be the victim but with a little empathy understanding and consideration the tides can change okay. absolutely well, that's, but well, that's some, only well, for somebody who wants to change isn't it that's exactly oh, yeah. my point. That maybe throwing your empathy and patience to the wrong person. To the wrong person. And some people, unfortunately, we talked about emotionally checking out, are already out of whatever it is that you have. So there's no amount of talking, of, of trying to say, look, let's work this out, that's going to move such people because emotionally they're out and they're just looking yeah. 
for the easiest way to physically get out of your life. Or in the first place, so they actually don't think that to use you. Maybe all along. Can, oh, definitely. Right the, That's another topic. Right from the they beginning. To use you, they came there to use you. And you are like, no, um, supply is gone. The tank is empty or the tank has refused to give. And usually they, they have to look for their next victim, unfortunately. So, yeah. Yeah. I agree. I'm going to use this opportunity to say something that I've been wanting to say. A lot of the times, people who mean well for us may give us wrong advice by asking us to keep quiet for the sake of peace. Uh, because they, they want the best for us. But many times, this is actually wrong advice because, you know, when somebody dies and they're being buried, what we say is, may their soul rest in peace. So the kind of peace that you're going to get when there's a situation where you're not happy with and you're being told to keep quiet for the sake of peace, you're going to have quiet. So your relationship is actually going to die and be resting in peace because you never get to resolve the things that are the issues. That never actually gives you the kind of peace that you want. The peace that you have is silence, silence of the graveyard where nobody is speaking about what is hurting them. And so that continues to happen. And that's really not peace because, yeah, you have silence, but you don't have peace because inside you still have the turmoil. And now you're forced to remain in that situation and there is no change. So that's why we have to be careful when people tell us that we should keep quiet for the sake of peace. What is it? You, are, you don't want to rock the boats, but you are sitting in a storm and you're going to be sitting there forever. And there's, there's one more type of you it's not, implode, it's not to you implode. <laughs> to you, and it might be bad. But there's one more type, I will never love again. People say this, I will never, because no matter what you do, and these are the ones who will say no when you say it's not you. Yeah, it's not your partner, it's you. Sometimes you need to actually check the person that you're having this relationship with. Because a lot of us also wants a relationship with someone who does not want a relationship with us you know that so just because you feel that i've seen this girl i really like her then i start to do this this a b c d i'll buy her land i'll buy her a house i buy her this and after everything you come back and say women are never satisfied or a woman will say men are never satisfied i did everything for him i hung from the ceiling i cooked this for that for him i did everything i'll wake up early cook for him go wash and men are never satisfied, so I will never love again. These are the types where we need to recognize that everybody knows what they want. Just the fact that I love this person doesn't mean that they feel the same way about me. And it's not because there's something wrong with me. It's because I am not what they want, isn't it? So if I'm not what they want, there is no amount of sacrifices that I'm going to make for him or for her that will make them change their mind. And after I've done all that, then I will turn around and say, no matter what you do, love doesn't work because I lay down my life for this person and they were never satisfied. Understand this place where you're doing all these extra things. Why are you even doing them? You're doing them because it's kind of like you're trying to bribe them because you've already seen that they're not interested in, in this relationship. But you're doing extra, extra, extra. And to you, you will see you're not trying to bribe them. You're just trying to show them how much you care. But what it is, is ask yourself, how much did they do for you to care that much? What did they really do? Did they, did they also do A, B, C, D, extra, extra things? No, they didn't. So you see, you were just loving them and you didn't recognize because you were so lost in your, in your love for them. You didn't recognize that they were not feeling the same thing. And yet they were showing it all the times because when you when you will do A, they didn't budge, they didn't change. You do B, they didn't change. So all the time they were showing you without lying to you that I am not interested in furthering this relationship. But you kept on working hard. And at the end of the day, you're heartbroken and you say to yourself, love doesn't work. It's just not fair. And it's kind of selfishness on your part as well, you know, to just be thinking of only yourself because this person has a right to what they want but you've heard it said that if you love something let it go now when you've been trying and the person is not budging they're not interested why are you being so selfish and thinking only about yourself and not letting them go you think it's love but it's not it is you want to possess them for yourself you want to own them for yourself so that's that's not love. And at the end of the day, we'll say, I will never love again. I'm just saying, trying to force who doesn't love you to love you is just postponing the evil day. 
what's going to happen is going to happen. And I think the earlier we look at this and really tell ourselves that bitter truth that, look, I am the only one that is invested in this relationship, the better for us. You can force a horse to the river, you cannot force it to drink water. So if someone is ready to be in partnership with you and to work with you, to work on your relationship, you will know. And if somebody has checked out, you will know. You'll be doing a lot of disservice, not just to yourself, but to that person, like you said, Uzo, mm -hmm. by continuing to hold on and not letting that person go. Seriously. So yeah. I hope we can all learn from that. And instead of just sitting and crying and trying to bribe and keep this person with your money, with your time, with all your efforts, with the gifts, with the food. Uh, so we need to act and act appropriately when we see these things. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. This should explain, this should explain some of those scenarios that have us at the end saying, I will never love again. Love doesn't work. Because I, it, it breaks my heart when I see people feeling that love is because and people feel love is hard work. That's not what it means. It means that when you're in the relationship with the right person, then you now start to work with your imperfections because we're all imperfect. It's not about doing something hard and trying to, to, to earn somebody's love. We don't earn love. Love is freely given naturally. So with that, we close this conversation and let's know in the comments what you have learned and that you're going to apply in your life. Thanks for being with us. Bye-bye.